come to uh, today's lecture that is uh, we are going to discuss what is uh, iodomatic and iodomatic titrations so in this titration so we will discuss uh, this uh, titration already we have discussed it so how these two uh, terms should be utilized during titrations so iodine is a, a mild oxidizing agent it is a mild oxidizing agent and it is used for titrating several analytes the reduction of free iodide, iodine to iodide ions and oxidation of iodide ions to free iodine occurs in these titrations. So these two phenomena that is uh, free iodine to iodide and second is oxidation of iodide ions to free iodine. So these two phenomena occur in this iodometric or iod iodimetric titration. So iodo and iodine. Keep remember. So this iodine, it will it will take two electrons, convert into two i minus. This is the reduction reactions, and again from two minus. Okay, so when uh, during oxidation they will lose electrons, convert to iodine. So this is your oxidation of iodide, and this is the reduction of iodine. So these two phenomena is I will study in titrations. So first is your iodine metric titration. What is iodine? This is difference is there. This is one is iod and this is one is iodo. One is i, one is o. So in this iodometric titration, in this titration, so a standard free, free iodine solution is used to titrate easily oxidizable substances. So here we will use directly iodine. In this case, we will use directly iodine. Iodine cannot be soluble in substances or water. So first it is dissolved in the potassium uh, iodide solutions. Okay. Iodine is sparingly soluble. So in potassium iodide solution, it becomes very good soluble. So first it is make a soluble within the uh, potassium iodide, it becomes a Ki3, Ki3 is one complex compound. Now this iodine is easily can react. Uh, the solution is first standardized before use uh, uh, with the uh, uh, standard solutions, uh, substances like uh, sulphide, thiosulphate, arsenate, etc. are estimated. So these substances like sulphide, thiosulphate, arsenate, etc. are estimated with the help of this uh, standard iodide solutions. How? So let us see these examples. So this example is S2O3. This is your thiosulfate. So in reaction with the iodine, it becomes S4O3, 2 negative plus 2 iodine. This iodine is iodide is there. Similarly, a sulfite reaction with the iodide. So every time we can see it becomes sulfates. So again, iodide is released. Arsenides with iodine. So here arsenates and 2H4 hydrazine reaction with the iodine will give you nitrogen and iodide so here i2 is converted to sulfide iodine converted to i plus tin is converted into tin plus so here is stannous it converted convert into stannic stannic so plus 2 state of the tin will convert into plus 4 state of the tin so these are the reaction in which iodine is converted to add that we have seen so after the reaction what amount of iodide is taken and uh, what amount of product is formed so we'll take this value Equ equivalent of this is equal to equivalent of this so we will see this problem in the uh, problem sections uh, next is your iodometric titration so in this iodometric titration it is an uh, here an oxidizing agent is allowed to react in neutral or in acidic medium with excess of potassium, uh, potassium iodide solutions to liberate free iodine so here potassium iodide uh, reacting with the oxidizing agent it will give you free iodine okay so we are not giving directly iodine here uh, we are giving indirectly in the indirect way of reactions in which uh, like uh, potassium iodide it check with the potassium oxidizing agent then they will give free iodine now this free iodine will be uh, used as a previous iodo iod uh, metric titrations uh, then we will get uh, get there uh, uh, this then we can titrate there so let us see this one uh, this free iodine is titrated against the standard uh, reducing agent like uh, hypo. Uh, then uh, after uh, uh, after titrating, uh, titrating with the hypo, uh, like a halogen, dichromate, cupric ions, peroxide, such that can be estimated by this method that is iodometric titration. So this free iodine is there. This free iodine we are getting from the potassium iodide after reaction with the oxidizing agent. So this iodine reaction with the hypo we are getting this product. So here copper sulphate is uh, reacting with the uh, Ki, so we will get here iodine, this iodine again titrated with the hypo, again potassium dichromate react with the Ki, so we are getting I2 here, we can see here we are getting here I2 here, so I2 is again titrated with the hypo reactions. So, 
So these two methods are different. No, normally we are uh, mostly we are using here idiomatic titration because uh, Ki uh, this is this is the indirect way of getting iodine. Then this iodine again titrated with the hypo reaction. So we will see in the problem. So indicators iodine act as a self indicator with a starch solution. So it is a indicator also. The in starch solution, what happens? The color of the starch becomes blue black. The disappearance of the blue color of the starch when the starch the color of the starch is becomes blue, so the, it indicates that the iodine is the, that is the end point of titration. So okay, so a starch is acting as the indicator in the solutions. Again, there are some points in which we have to keep remember during uh, iodimatic titrations. So here and uh, during the reaction, pH control of the solution is very necessary. Means solution you should know the pH of the solutions, otherwise uh, different type of side reaction may occur. So what are the problems? Let us see that. So in strong alkaline solutions, iodine disproportionates to iodide and iodides and C. Iodine in al strong alkaline solutions, this is strong alkaline solutions, it's converted to I minus and IO minus plus one. So this is a disproportionation reaction. So iodine converted to iodine minus and IO minus. So this problem occurs, so we should not keep that too much strong alkaline solutions. In a strong acidic solution, a starch is used to detect the end point is either hydrolyzed or decomposed. So if you take more strong solution, then a starch will be also what happened hydrolyzed or decomposed. You have to not take too much acidic solution, too much alkaline solution also. In a strong acidic solution, uh, iodide minus so iodide uh, produced in reactions tend to be oxidized by the dissolved oxygen in acidic solution. So, uh, in strong solution, iodide is produced. So, before reaction with the uh, this, uh, another this oxidizing agent, it will react with the oxygen and it will give you iodine. So, we cannot estimate the amount of iodide ion. So, this is one problem. The reducing power of the several reducing agent is increased in neutral solutions. So, here uh, we can see here. So, here H3SO3 plus I2 in water. It is converted to H3SO4 and iodide minus. So this will be shifted to left in acidic. So if the, if the medium will be acidic, then it will, it will shift to backward direction. Okay, so here iodide will again convert to iodide ion. So it will it will be shifted. So here uh, reducing power of agent is increasing neutral solution. So here reducing power of H3SO4 is increased here. So you have to keep in mind. Iodine has a low solubility in water, that is primarily soluble that we discussed, but uh, uh, I3- is highly soluble. So iodine solutions are prepared by dissolving iodine in concentrated solution of potassium iodide. Like this, I2 plus I- minus, it will give you I3- minus, this is a complex, so actual species is used. So this is the actual species which is used in the titration. We can't use ID, I2 as a directly, so we have to put uh, use in, in the form of in the solution of potassium iodide. So normally uh, these type of questions are asked in the uh, in terms of this one objectives and statements so uh, you have to keep this as small small facts to understand so let us take some uh, problem a just uh, a 10 ml of potassium dichromate solution liberated i2 from ki solutions the liberated iodine was titrated by 16 ml of m by 25 Hypo solution. Calculate the concentration of K2Cr2O7 solution in milligram per liter. So this uh, concentration solution, K2Cr2 solution is uh, 10 ml is there. It is liberated iod uh, iodine from the Ki. So Ki is reacting with the potassium dichromate. So here equation is also there. This is Ki. This is potassium dichromate. So in acidic medium, it is liberating I2. So here K2Cr2O7. If you see plus oxygen state of this Cr is plus 6. Here oxygen state is plus 3. And second state, this iodine liberated is titrated with the other uh -huh. iodine. So this is your hypo iodine. Uh, so hypo react with the iodine, it will give you the S4O6 and iodide. So here milliequivalent of 10 ml of K2Cr2O7 is equal to milliequivalent of I2 liberated. So this uh, 10 ml of K2Cr2 solution will be your weight by equivalent base, and that is equal to milliequivalent of thiosulfate. This is your thiosulfate. 1 by 25 to 16, so we will get here 0 0.64. So here we get 
दिस वेट ऑफ टेन एम एल प्रोडक्शन जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स फोर इंटू फोर्टी नाइन थर्टी वन पॉइंट थर्टी सिक्स मिलीग्राम देर फोर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ के टू सी आर टू और सेवन इन मिलीग्राम लीटर वी थर्टी वन पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स सो डिवाइड बाई टेन टू थाउजेंड विल गेट थ्री वन थ्री सिक्स मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो दिस इज योर कंसेंट्रेशन प्रोडक्शन डायक्रोम सोल्यूशन इन मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो सेकेंड विल सी इज द सेकेंड प्रॉब्लम फिफ्टी एम एल ऑफ अक्वा सोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन प्रोक्साइड वॉज टाइट्रेटेड विथ एन एक्सेस ऑफ पोटासियम आयोडाइड सोल्यूशन इन डायल्यूट एस टू एस ओ फोर द लिबरेटेड आयोडिन रिक्वायर्ड ट्वेंटी एम एल ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट वन नॉर्मल सोडियम दैट इज हाइपो सोल्यूशन फॉर कम्प्लीट रिएक्शन कम्प्लीट कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ एस टू ओ टू इन ग्राम पर लीटर इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉल्यूम स्ट्रेंथ एट एस टी पी इन टर्म्स ऑफ नॉर्मलिटी इन परसेंटेज सो हेयर एस टू ए टू इज एक्टिंग विद पोटासियम आयोडेड वी कैन सी हेयर एक्सेस ऑफ पोटासियम आयोडेड सो ऑल डी एक्सेस विल गिव यू आई टू एंड देन दिस आई टू इज टाइटेड विद द हाइपो सॉल्यूशन सो इट विल गिव यू एन टू एन ए टू एस फोर ओ सिक्स एन आयोडेड सो वी रिक्वायर दिस एंड दिस सो मिली प्लेंट ऑफ एस टू ओ टू विल भी इक्वल टू मिली प्लेंट ऑफ के आई यूज एंड अगेन दिस मिली प्लेंट के आई यूज विल भी इक्वल टू मिली प्लेंट ऑफ आई टू लिबरेटेड एंड अगेन दिस इज इक्वल टू मिली प्लेंट ऑफ हाइपो यूज सो हाइपो इज गिवन हेयर That is uh, 20 into 0.1 normality. Okay, so we have to find the uh, concentration of H2O2 in terms of volume strength and normality. So here we will get first normality. So normality into 50, 50 ml is given here. So we will get here normality equal to of H2O2 will be your 20 into 0.1 divided by 50. So we will get here 0.04 normality of hydrogen peroxide. The strength of H2O2. So the strength is uh, how much? So normality into uh, equivalent weight. So equivalent weight of H2O2. This is the equivalent weight of H2O2. So we know the normality of H2O2 that is 0.04 and equivalent is 34 by 2 that is 17. So you multiply it, we will get here 0.68 gram per liter. Now percentage. So this is your uh, 0.6 gram in 1000 ml. So in 100 ml, how much gram is there? The gram will be your in 100 ml 0.68 gram. Okay. So in terms of percentage, 0.68 into 100, we will get here 6.8 percent. So this is the Percentage of H2O2. Volume is 10 to H2O2. So in volume is H2O2, it will be your normality into 5.6. So multiply normality 0.04 into 5.6. So we'll get here 0.224 volume. So uh, one volume of this H2O2 is leading 0.224 uh, uh, volume of oxygen. That is called volume is 10. So this is the reaction. So here equations are not that much difficult. If you see this. Uh, small things like first reactions first step is the first reaction second is the milliequivalent weight put the value and you will get the result so this is the way of solving the idiometric and idiometric problems so for more problems you go for our problem sections of idiometric and idiometrics so, so you will get there how the different type of problems are being solved and you will understand